Last year, I made a video about Pokemon Gold 97, and while it's cool that it became my most popular video by far, it also kind of became one of the most outdated. Back in 2018, there was a leaked version of the Pokemon Gold and Silver demo from the Nintendo Space World 1997 event, which was all kinds of interesting, because instead of Johto, it had a completely different region, as well as some Pokemon designs that never saw the light of day, and some that were changed before the games were eventually released in 1999. Gold 97 was a ROM hack of Pokemon Crystal that took the assets from that demo and used bits from the final games to fill in the blanks. The result was an experience that gave us an idea of what the second generation of Pokemon would be like if the games hadn't been redone into the gold and silver that we know today. I recommend watching my previous video first if you haven't already, but here's a refresher. You started the game in Silent Town, with Professor Oak inviting you to join his child labor scheme. You then departed on a journey to become the champion and to complete the Pokedex, traveling through the region of Nihon, exploring every nook and cranny and toppling over Team Rocket's whole operation. It strived to be authentic, as if it was an official Pokemon game that could have been released back in 1997. The limited color palette resembles something that you would see on a Super Game Boy or a Game Boy Color, and it kept the sprites that appeared in the demo. Sometimes this resulted in inconsistencies, since after all, the games weren't finished yet, but overall it achieved its goal of feeling authentic. One of its main flaws was that the difficulty wasn't very well balanced, and the player would easily become overleveled by the halfway point. The other was that the unfinished map designs of the demo resulted in some locations being very basic and uninteresting. In the meantime, there have been... a lot of updates. So many that it became 100% more super. Behind the curtains, it's now a ROM hack of gold version, instead of crystal. The demo didn't have animated sprites or a female protagonist to begin with, so you're not losing anything. But now you can select between a Super Game Boy palette or a Game Boy Color palette. The mechanics and the story are mostly unaltered. You'll still go to the same places, see the same events and embarrass the same terrorists. But there have been some small alterations, such as the locations of wild Pokémon, the locations of some side events, and the addition of some totally new hold items. Many locations no longer have their placeholder names, and a handful have gotten a facelift, such as Okara's gym actually having a layout now. Although, in the interest of being accurate to the demo, most locations haven't changed, for better or for worse. Many Pokémon have also been renamed, and the balance has been tweaked in multiple ways. Some have received changes to their base stats and level-up moves, in an attempt to alleviate situations like Dark-types being horribly fragile, since the Space World type chart meant that they were getting smacked hard by normal-type moves, which are extremely common. The trainers you will face in your journey through the region of Nihon also have updated rosters. As a result, the difficulty curve has been significantly improved. On the old version I covered, opponents would be around the mid-twenties by the time your team was crossing the thirties, so you could easily bulldoze everything in your way. It's not some super ball-busting challenge, but it's far from Hoenn Remake's levels of Brain Dead, with the post-game levels scaling beyond the Elite Four. The graphics, on the other hand, have only gotten some very minor changes. The music is mostly the same too, but now it includes some beta versions of music found in some of those juicy Nintendo leaks. So if you're wondering about that bizarro New Barktown music you're hearing right now, that's why. Pokémon received new cries too, making them a bit more unique. Finally, there's the Southwest Islands that serve as the post-game region. They are unlocked after beating the League, when you get an SS ticket from Professor Oak. 
During the trip, the ship is damaged and you're entrusted with finding replacement parts so that you can go back to Nihon. But while well before it was this, now it's this. They have been fleshed out quite a lot with a bunch of new areas to explore and a bunch of new quests to solve. There's at least twice the playtime now, and if nothing else, this is one reason to check it out again if you haven't played Gold 97 since early last year. But overall it's basically the same experience, just with a noticeable change to the difficulty, thanks to revamped team layouts and a level curve that keeps up with the player. If you haven't tried it yet, maybe this refined version will convince you. And if it doesn't, maybe Gold and Silver 97 Reforged will, Satan bless its cursed name. This pair of ROM hacks use Gold 97 as a base and give it an alternate coat of paint with its own style and modifications. Reforged includes many of the same improvements as Super Gold 97, such as the bigger Southwest Islands and the general rebalancing of the gameplay. But it goes further a few steps of its own, and is especially keen on improving the combat. Reforged doesn't have updated mechanics like the physical special split or the fairy type. In the end it's still generation 2, but Pokemon tend to learn moves that are more optimized for single player, by which I mean things like having a wider and larger range of useful moves at their disposal, whereas the official generation 2 games were still limited compared to generation 4 and later. That said, it can't really do much about the questionable weaknesses of dark types, and no amount of rebalancing will really help the fact that they got the short end of the stick with the Space World type chart. But like with Gold 97, you can always switch to the type chart used in the final games. Reforged also goes much further with map changes, and as of this video also has some new areas unique to it. One such example is Sanskrit Town, which previously had this annoying layout that forced you to go around the center, while in Reforged it's open and has a new area inside the waterfall. Another example is the 5th Floor Tower. In Super Gold 97, it remains the simple collection of squares that it was in the demo, while in Reforged it resembles the Sprout Tower and has an actual layout befitting an early game dungeon rather than just some trainers plopped in the middle. Most plot events are ultimately the same, but you do have minor details that have been altered, or some events being done in a slightly different order, such as having to beat the 5th floor tower before the gym, or Okara now leaning into his delinquent looks, or Whitney being restored into a trend chasing thought. One interesting change is Kanto. In the old concept, the entire region of Kanto was squished down into a single city that vaguely resembled the region. This is because, originally, Generation 2's region was going to be a sort of alternate reality version of all of Japan, with Pokémon's Kanto region representing the real-life region of Kanto. And well, Reforged decided to go to extremes and insert nearly every location into this single city, if you can even call it that anymore. Places like Mount Moon, the Power Plant, Victory Road, there's so much stuff packed into it that the result is a giant confusing mess. A fantastic giant confusing mess. There's some other surprises, like some unexpected battles in certain places. It also does a better job of guiding the player. It's still fairly linear, but you get some more hints as to where you have to go next. I could go more in detail, but then I'd just be repeating myself like I do so often. I could go more in detail, but the gist of it is that Super Gold 97 and Gold and Silver 97 Reforged are two sides of the same coin, two branches of the same tree, two versions of the same game? The key difference between the two is purely stylistic. You can imagine Super Gold 97 as the gold and silver from a parallel universe where Game Freak didn't work in Valve time and the games got released on schedule. It borrows the existing assets from the old Space World 97 demo, and as such, the world and its characters look somewhere between Generation 1 and 2. 
This is how gold and silver worked back in 1997, before the original region was scrapped and replaced with Choto. Reforged, on the other hand, comes from a universe where the old region wasn't scrapped, but the games had still been delayed until 1999. And that's where the name Reforged comes from. It's Gold 97, but in the style of the final versions of Gold and Silver released in 1999. For Pokémon that kept their designs from 1997, or Pokémon that only received minor changes, Reforged simply uses the final game's sprites or uses slightly modified ones. But for those that received significant changes or simply don't exist in the final games, Reforged introduces a new set of sprites, including a variation for both gold and silver, just like how the official games also have different sprites. These are done in the style of Generation 2, with the same kind of poses and the same kind of colors and shading. This makes it so that Pokémon all have a consistent style to them, instead of being a mix of red and blue, yellow and Generation 2 art styles, which is something that was unavoidable with the Space World demo assets because blah 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 unfinished game. The separation into gold and silver also includes some differences in wild Pokémon locations. And unlike the official games, you can catch every single Pokémon without trading or events or whatever. And of course, the rest of the game is now in cover too. Again, it uses assets from the final gold and silver when possible. Otherwise, it uses assets from the demo, but touched up to fit the Generation 2 style. Reforged also takes an extra step and includes Lugia, who is the cover legendary for the final silver version, but didn't exist back in 1997. According to the cutting room floor, the earliest confirmed instance of Lugia being programmed into the games was in March of 1999. This was 8 months before the final product was released. Originally, Hoho -Ho was going to be the cover legendary for both Gold and Silver, and Vugia was instead created for the movie, The Power of One. And in retrospective, you can kind of tell, because even though neither has much relevance to the plot, Hoho -Ho was at least significant to the lore of the Choto region. Anyway, Vugia just serves the same purpose as Hoho, -Ho, really. You can talk to this guy in Nawai City to start their side quest, but their existence is pretty much irrelevant to the main plot. But hey, it's there. On that same note, I do wish Reforged would have taken even more liberties with certain parts, like maybe reimagining things like Chikorita's evolution line, to fit its mysterious middle stage that is so detached from its first and third stages. At this point you might be asking, ok, this is very cool and all, but which one should I play? Well, first of all, don't ask me such a difficult question. And second, that's really up to you. Like I explained, Super Gold 97 and Reforged are two sides of the same coin. They serve the same purpose, but do it in different ways. If I absolutely had to make a conclusion, then I'd say that Reforged is the better game. But Super Gold 97 is the more interesting one. Let me explain. Reforged doesn't suffer from the same art style inconsistencies that Gold 97 did, thanks to its combination of assets taken from the final games and the assets created for it. The new bits of dialogue help guide the player, and the new and updated areas still improve and expand the region beyond what remained of it in the Space World demo. Even Kanto. Its rebalancing also makes the gameplay more engaging. The difficulty isn't too hard or too easy, and the improved movesets greatly increase the options available to the player, and make Pokémon more useful without having to rely on single-use TMs. As a whole, it's the more complete and polished upgrade to the original Gold 97, and it fits the bill of a vanilla Pokémon experience better than Super Gold 97. But that's exactly why it loses some of what made Gold 97 unique. It reimagines what Gold and Silver would have been like with the old region. It's a lot more colorful, and nighttime no longer makes me want to wash my eyes with a cactus. 
but by no longer using all the assets from the demo, it doesn't seem quite as exotic and unique anymore. It's no longer some bizarre Generation 1.5 abomination that could have existed in an alternate timeline, where gold and silver were never delayed and reworked into the products that we know today. And for me, that's a big part of why Gold 97 is so interesting. But if you have no attachment to that, then Reforged is just Generation 2 in a different region. It's a good ROM hack, but it doesn't stand out from the crowd in the same way that Super Gold 97 does. Yes, yes, I know, this is some wishy-washy bollocks rather than an actual conclusion, but that's because I'm not trying to sell you a revolutionary new ROM hack with next generation features. I'm trying to sell you an experience, and Super Gold 97 nails that experience by staying authentic to the 1997 concept, even if it means being objectively inferior in terms of consistency and design. But you know what? I have just the perfect solution to this dilemma, the solution that will settle this once and for all. Just play both.